As an engineer, the most rewarding thing I got from selling Flexar actuators online is seeing people from different cultures use it for different projects. This is what this video is going to be about. Some cool applications for Flexar that you have come up with. Now, it's been less than three months since I started selling this actuator, so some of you haven't even received it yet. Sorry for any shipping delays. But I think most people have received it by now, and some of you even started sending me some videos using Flexar as a speaker or to slap some magnets which are the two main applications I mentioned in the launch video. But there are some makers who took it an extra step. Let's start with the first one. Hello Ugana made this whole 3D printed motor using three flexor actuators to rotate the rotor. If you want to get into PCB motor design, I think this method is much simpler to start with because it allows you to easier understand how the individual poles of the motor are working. This video shows the whole process of how he built it, including all the challenges, so make sure you check that out. Another great YouTube creator called Indoor Geek used Flexar as a reference to design his own PCB coils. This project is also very interesting because he intends to use these coils to make a thin air mechanically powered 7 segment display. One other cool application I saw with Flexar is using it as an induction sensor to detect metal objects, which this video perfectly illustrates. This is something that I never mentioned on this channel before because in my previous job I was working on some similar stuff and I didn't want to get into some NDA troubles but I think now there's also some kits available from Texas Instrument and Cypress Semiconductors that also uses PCB coils for this application. I also saw a video on Twitter where Flexar was turned into a transformer to light up an LED and there was also another experiment where Flexar was used to transmit a signal wirelessly to a phone's magnetometer. Now let's talk about the amazing heating properties of our coil. All DC motors get hot, but usually 80 degrees Celsius is their operating temperature. And this rating is what's limiting me from making my actuator more powerful. But there was one guy who thought of using this heating feature to his advantage. If you have a filament based 3D printer, you know that they have a heat bed. This heat bed is usually made from a super long PCB trace, just like our actuator. So Marcelo, a physician from Argentina that works on genetic diagnosis, wants to use my actuator as a flexible microheater. He explained to me how his team analyzes certain molecular reactions that has to be sustained under specific temperatures. And because of the COVID pandemic, they are seeking new possibilities to have their genetic lab more portable. When you are making a reaction, you you put the liquid into into a recipient like this. Okay. And with the flexar, you can okay uh, surround it. And uh, for instance, using two flexar, you can completely surround so the, the okay the oh, sorry <laughs> <laughs> the, the the dispositive. Uh, and in order to, to maintain a, a constant temperature for okay. all of that, the that, that sounds super interesting. In particular, for the for this type of reaction, I I need to sustain a temperature of 65, 70 degrees Celsius for so, about one hour. Uh, so I I I thought that uh, it would be useful for that. And, and it's totally portable, so you, you can use a, a battery to, to supply the energy required for, for heating your, your reaction in the field. So that, that was the cool. inspiration. So you're currently <laughs> making a PID control loop to, to control the temperature yes. inside? Okay. Yes. So you have a sensor yes, in inside? Perfect. Uh, yes, I'm working on that and, and in order to, to, to turn on and turn off the yeah. The, the, the voltage uh, source in order to, to, to maintain the, the temperature, yes. That sounds really interesting. <laughs> thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> I'd like to thank Marcelo for having this conversation with me and teaching me about an application I never thought of. Now, there was one last project that when I saw it completely blew my mind. The guy who made it is called William Wojak and he's a biohacker. He has a magnet implanted in his arm, so the first thing he did when he received Flexar is make it flap with it. 
The second thing he did is turn his hand into a speaker. Now, I'm not that familiar with having magnets implanted in your hand, but Will has agreed to have a chat on the topic. Hi. How are you, Will? Not too bad, I'm still trying to wake up a little bit. <laughs> I have a lot of questions, first of all. The first question I have is um, the size of your magnet. Is it 3 millimeter and what what kind of rating does it have? It's roughly um, 3 by 14 millimeters, I would say. So okay. It's encased in a cylinder, a okay. uh, glass cube. I would say the rating, what is it, like 52 in? How long did you have it there, the magnet? Ago. Okay, so I think they will last for like five years, correct? Yeah, yeah. Sounds okay. Like <laughs> um, do you feel the magnet inside moving even when you did the speaker um, sound? So I noticed it more with the speaker. It seems like when the flexor is more rigid, then the effect seems to vibrate the magnet more than okay. the flexor. So def I no definitely noticed it more with the speaker than the, just the haptic actuation. Makes sense. A lot of people seem to put it in their finger. Why have you decided to put it in your hand? So there are two different types of magnet implants. There's the field sensing magnets, which people will typically do in the fingertips. Okay. And that's for like sensing electromagnetic fluctuations and things. Um, but I was more looking to do like haptic feedback and some kind of internal speaker. Okay. So I went for the stronger magnet, which would be the force magnet, which I was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's also pretty handy if you're like working on something and you need somewhere to keep the little screws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it would be useful like to detect the poles of a brushless motor, that that would be fine. Yeah, I think it's the magnets, but there's the issue of, you know, dealing with electronics and just always having a magnetic field in your working hand could cause an issue, you know. I had a blast chatting with Will Marcello and all the other makers I mentioned in this video. Thank you for being such an inspiration. If you're interested in making any of these projects, you can find them linked down all below. And if I missed your Flexar project, please let me know. Maybe you can do a second part of this video. Flexar just clicked. I was like, I think that's the answer. I've been looking for it. <laughs>